is a double stranded structure where two strands are joined together by complementary base pairing. The two strands of the double helix are held together by non covalent forces. The complementary strands of the double helix can also be made to come apart when a solution of DNA is heated above physiological temperatures to near 100 degrees Celsius or under conditions of high pH, a process known as denaturation. However, this complete separation of DNA strands by denaturation is reversible. When heated solutions of denatured DNA are slowly cooled, single strands often meet their complementary strands and reform regular double helices. However, this complete separation of DNA strands by denaturation is reversible. When heated solutions of denatured DNA are slowly cooled, single strands often meet their complementary strands and reform regular double helices. DNA maximally absorbs ultraviolet light at a wavelength of 260 nanometer. It is the bases that are principally responsible for this absorption. When the temperature of a solution of DNA is raised to near the boiling point of water, the optical density, called absorbance, at 260 nanometer markedly increases, a phenomenon known as hyperchromicity. The explanation for this increase is that duplex DNA absorbs less ultraviolet light by 40% than do individual DNA chains. This hypochromicity is due to base stacking, which diminishes the capacity of the bases in duplex DNA to absorb ultraviolet light. If we plot the optical density of DNA as a function of temperature, we observe that the increase in absorption occurs abruptly over a relatively narrow temperature range. The midpoint of this transition is the melting point at EM. Like ice, DNA melts, it undergoes a transition from a highly ordered double helical structure to a much less ordered structure of individual strands. The sharpness of the increase in absorbance at the melting temperature tells us that the denaturation and renaturation of complementary DNA strands is a highly cooperative, zippering-like process. Renaturation probably occurs by means of a slow nucleation process in which a relatively small stretch of bases on one strand finds and pairs with their complement on the complementary strand. The remainder of the two strands then rapidly zipper up from the nucleation site to reform an extended double helix. The melting temperature of DNA is a characteristic of each DNA that is largely determined by the G, C content of the DNA and the ionic strength of the solution. The higher the percent of G, C base pairs in the DNA, and hence the lower the content of A, T base pairs, the higher is the melting point. Dependence of DNA denaturation on GC content and on salt concentration. The greater the G and C content, the higher the temperature must be to denature the DNA strand. DNA from different sources was dissolved in solutions of low, red line, and high green line concentrations of salt at pH 7.0. The points represent the temperature at which the DNA denatured graft against the GC content. GC base pairs contribute more to the stability of DNA than do A, T base pairs because of the greater number of hydrogen bonds for the former, 3 in EGC base pair and 2 for AT, but also, importantly, because the stacking interactions of GC base pairs with adjacent base pairs are more favorable than the corresponding interactions of A, T base pairs with their neighboring base pairs. Likewise, the higher the salt concentration of the solution, the greater is the temperature at which the DNA denatures. The effect of ionic strength reflects another fundamental feature of the double helix. The backbones of the two DNA strands contain phosphoryl groups that carry a negative charge. These negative charges are close enough across the two strands that, if not shielded, they tend to cause the strands to repel each other, facilitating their separation. At high ionic strength, the negative charges are shielded by cations, thereby stabilizing the helix. Conversely, at low ionic strength, the unshielded negative charges render the helix less stable. 